Dip, dip. Oh my God, this bike is so much fun. Woohoo! Heck yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. What is going on, you guys? It's Ginger on Wheels here. Let's do a top speed test on the Pilaria XXX. Oh, it's so fast. Oh, it hurts to breathe. <laughs> we got 50 miles an hour. 52. 53. Oh, 55 miles an hour. This thing is crazy fast. 54 miles an hour, but can it stop? Let's see. Oh. Stop! Oh, not that we need to. Brings back the reminiscent days of the uh, Harley Livewire. You guys remember that video from last summer? My God! Riding really fast e-bikes, aka motorcycles, is quite the experience. Wow, you just get to sit down and hold on and shut up. The bike takes you for a ride. Heck yeah, let's test out this suspension. Oh, what bump? Oh, around the corner, we got the Supermoto tires, stock. Everyone is swapping out their, their Talaria and Suron tires for the road tires, but this baby comes with the Supermotos on it. There is something so menacing about the whir of the gearbox on this thing. It's got a belt reduction down to a chain. Gow! Don't, don't want to run the stop sign. Very serious brakes on this device. We've got 220 millimeter rotors with quad piston brakes. I should say though, in full disclosure, my rear brake was and is still leaking fluid from the rear caliper. And my front brake is pretty squeaky, but it's not squeaky anymore that it's all heated up. <laughs> so let's talk to Laria. It's like a high performance Suron. They're like 4,500 bucks. And then this XXX came out at $3,000. Just took the market by storm. Sold directly out. Second batch is almost sold out, even though it's $250 more. And I can see why. This thing is super fun. This might be the most fun you can have on an e-gadget for 3,000 bucks, period. This thing will give the Wolf GTR a run for its money, I'm sure. But the form factor is just so much bigger. This thing is not portable at all. In fact, I would argue that's why they actually came out with this thing. The Sting R is just huge. It's a full-blown dirt bike, and you're trying to get away with saying it's a, oh, it's legal, it's electric. No, bro, that is a huge dirt bike that's on the road with knobbies. <laughs> I don't care that it's electric. Just because the lock hasn't, hasn't caught up yet doesn't mean you should, in good conscience, ride that thing around on the streets and sidewalks and stuff. This thing is right at the actual limit of how big an e-gadget can get before I just think it's ridiculous. The Fidico Lightspeed Knight was a ridiculously huge scooter. Like that thing should be registered with the insurance and department of motor vehicles. This thing shouldn't, but it is right on the threshold in my opinion. It'd be really easy to get yourself in trouble with this thing still. See? See how easy this is? Legal? Not legal. Oh, but the not legal is so much more fun. Not legal? Legal. See how that's a very uh, distinct difference there. Legal, not legal. Now on the surface, this thing does appear to have similar suspension to the Sting R, but it's got different linkages. It is not as comfortable. I will tell you definitively, hands down, this thing is not your off-roading pillow suspension you're used to on the Talaria or the Suron. It does have pretty sweet suspension, don't get me wrong, but it's not like you're riding around on a cloud anymore. Oh, I can't not. Let's go, baby. Woohoo! Oh yeah, baby! We're riding behind a city vehicle going 50 in the 35. Sir, Public Works 034537. Going 50 in the 35. Oh, this thing is so much fun. The seat could be a little more comfortable, I will say. I have padded butt on my uh, pants right now. I've been sitting down for about 20 minutes. I'm 215 pounds now, and it's a little uncomfortable. You know, I could see this getting uncomfortable after about an hour or so, for sure. Maybe I have a sore butt by the end of the day. Because you could ride this thing all day. You have a 40 amp hour battery. Not quite as big as the Sting R, which has 45 amp hour, but you're still gonna be riding for a good portion of the day. And even if you aren't, it comes with a 10 amp stock charger, which is the largest stock charger I've ever seen on any e-gadget. 
10 amps, plug it right into the side of the battery, and this thing will be charged up in like about four, four and a half hours. Pretty nice. Compared to some of the huge scooters that have come out with like 24 hour charging, I'll take four hours any day. Let's go. We just left all those cars right at the stoplight. All right, so this thing is two inches shorter than the Sting R. It's got the super slim form factor. Wow, is this fast. This is just abusively fast. We are in sport mode though. And let me, let me show you real quick. So you have a little dial here on the left with the up and down arrows and you have four, four little numbers. I mean, number one, number two, number three, number four. Those are your e-braking levels. So when I let off the throttle, it just controls how hard the bike brakes when I'm not holding the throttle. Now we all know this thing comes with the Supermoto tires. It's not meant for off-roading, but you, if you know anything about me, you know I'm about to send it up this off-road trail. Say how these street tires fare off-road. Oh, dude, you could totally ride this off-road. Suspension's gonna leave you wanting a little bit more, but wow. For, at full throttle, starting up a hill, I just felt the belt slip a little tiny bit. Oh, this thing is so much fun. The suspension isn't nearly as comfortable as the Sting R, and you probably shouldn't be riding this thing off-road anyway, but if you need to, you totally can. It's heavy enough that it stays, stays planted. <laughs> this thing is fun. It is illegal. We're literally just dirt biking right now. I don't know where the line for legal is and where the social line is for like how much of a dick am I being? Because if someone's just trying to walk and have a peaceful day, this would be kind of annoying to see. But if someone's out here mountain biking, they're not gonna care. So here we're stopped and floor it. Oh wow, yeah. Back tire doesn't burn out and it will get up and go. It'll just get up and go with you on it. <laughs> or if you're not on it, this thing will whiskey throttle directly without you. So much fun. Oh my God. So if you're a parent and you're thinking, should I buy my kid a Talaria? The answer is hard no. If you're a kid and you're watching this video and you're thinking, should I save up my money and buy a Talaria? The answer is hard yes. Oh my God. If your parents will let you get one of these, uh, get one. Do not tell them how fast it goes though, because they will not let you get one. Regen braking's back. See, we're decelerating a little bit. Oh, those front brakes have got some squeak. Now we do have adjustable suspension on this thing. Check it out. We've got the motorcycle style uh, piston hydraulic suspension in the front, and we do have a rebound adjustment knob right here. Got some clicks, and this side does not adjust at all, but this is your rebound adjustment over here. No compression adjustment in the front. I like this too. When we're stopped, bike's in sport mode right now. When we put the kickstand down, boop, now it says wait on the screen, and it goes into a standby mode so that you can't whiskey throttle it while the bike is stopped. Very intuitive, good feature. With the rear suspension, you can adjust this nut with a spanner wrench, and you can adjust the preload on the uh, compression here, and you can also adjust the rebound with your knob right here. But as you can see, it's just point A, point B. There's no linkage in between really, so this is all you get for suspension. It works and it's comfy, but it's not like amazing pillowy mountain bike suspension like I'm used to on the Sting R. The Sting R is two inches taller than this thing, has a five amp hour bigger battery, but it weighs 20 pounds more. You really gotta decide if it's worth it for you to be riding around a full blown dirt bike. Or do you actually live in the middle of nowhere? Or do you need the uh, Talaria XXX where you're a little more under the radar here? We do not have pedals, so we can't say we're fully legal, but they do sell a pedal kit for this thing. Extra tricky, I know. You can install the kit and then it looks like you have pedals. And I think they actually do function as pedals, which is kind of cool, but you know how much work you're gonna have to do to pedal around a 150 pound bike? One other thing to note about this bike that is not unique to this bike, it's like with all Talarias and Surons in general, that noise, that gearbox noise, you can't make that go away. This is not a stealthy bike. If you're riding around a neighborhood at night or something, people will hear you. But at the same time, it's really dangerous to have an e-bike or an e-gadget that goes as fast as this thing does without making a little bit of noise because it lets people know that you're coming. Oh, this thing is so much fun. And the corners on these supermotos. We've got grip for days on these tires. I do wish the thing had a little bigger display. I know this is like a bare bones minimum Talaria, so we're not gonna get a whole bunch of extra features, but it'd be nice if the display weren't here, if it were here, and if it were just a little bit bigger. Let me turn the bike off for you. We do have push button start. You push this button right here. It goes doot. Take the key and you touch it to this top surface area, and the bike sounds like a microwave, ready? 
<laughs> there you go, but we're on. This thing says Telaria, it'll give you your speed, battery percentage, we're still at 87% battery, and your regen mode is in the bottom right there, it's very, very small. Can you see that little number? That's a number two, we're in regen braking mode two. So after I turn it on, the button is still blinking wait. This is our headlight here, it looks very cool. It's like in the shape of an H, and it's got modes. We have a low beam mode, which is actually on the top, and then we have a high beam mode, which shines both, and then you have off for both. But the uh, runner light here, this H light, stays on all the time. So you, you can't turn that off, can't ride super stealth, FYI. For those of you wondering if you could ride two people on this thing, I think you could. Sit towards the front like this, and then you've got plenty of room for someone in the back. Keep in mind that the tail though, the actual area where the rear of the seat is supported by, is supported by hardened plastic. There's no like metal bar or anything that reinforces the back, so it could break. This is so much fun. I would love to get this thing out on a track and just open it up, do some nice hard turns. I feel like you could really put some weight on these tires around corners. Like I don't have corners sharp enough and fast enough to be able to really test the tires out for what they're actually worth. And this is why you don't go speeding through residential. If I had been going 50 right there, I would have smacked the rear end of that car for sure. Never go faster than you can stop. I never put myself in a situation where I cannot stop in time. In that last video though, I admit I did come up on the intersection fast, but that's because I didn't see the car and he didn't see me either, but we both stopped in time. No harm, no foul. All right, let's try and rip up this road. This is a solid, straight road. Everyone goes 50 on this road in their cars. Get a DOT approved helmet. I'm wearing a mountain bike helmet right now and it does not feel safe. Also hard to breathe. I would expect people to be paying around four or $5,000 for this thing. For the low profile, like insane power in such a low profile, four or $5,000 is my guess for how much this would cost in the market. I don't know how they're getting away with charging 3,200 bucks for it. Seems like they'd be losing money at that point, but hey, I'm not in charge. It doesn't have a very big spinometer. It doesn't have very big brake lights. The rear suspension could be a little more comfortable and the seat definitely leaves some to be desired, but for 3,200 bucks, like you're not getting a better EV. The amount of R&D and like the heavy duty controllers and motors and parts that go into building this thing, really makes, it puts into perspective kind of how overpriced electric scooters are. E-bikes are wildly more popular though, so they can probably make a lot more of these and keep the cost down than they can with the hyper scooters. I like how easy the throttle is to maintain constant. Like if I want to just constantly go 30 miles an hour, it's not hard to just hold the throttle in one spot and keep it going 30. Or I can reduce it a little bit, keep it going 28 or maybe 32. Like, it's not hard to do. On an electric scooter, it kind of is. It's hard to pinpoint what it is exactly about the throttle. I would love to learn more about electric motors and learn why this throttle is so easy to use compared to electric scooters. But I don't know the reason why right now, so I can't tell you why. Oh, the cornering. You can get so low to the ground. My knee is like six inches from the ground around these corners. That's so much fun. See, okay, with certain electric gadgets, the speed to fun ratio is totally different. Like with e-skates, it's kind of in the middle. With an electric unicycle, you can be going 10 miles an hour and still have a blast. On this thing, if you're going 10 miles an hour or even 15 like right now, this is just straight up boring. You have to be going like 35, 40 to have fun on this thing. With an electric scooter, you only have to be going about 20 to have fun, maybe 25. E-skates probably around the same. Electric unicycle is even slower. But the reason why so many people get in trouble with these Talarias is A, because they're so easy to go so fast and it pulls you. You don't drive it, it drives you. And the fact that you have to be going that fast to have that much fun. And then it's right at your fingertips. Like just the flick of a wrist and you're having fun. I'm kind of glad this is a demo. I'm glad I don't own this because I know myself well enough to know I would crash or get a ticket eventually. You can't ride like I'm riding right now for long and not crash or get a ticket. You will mess up eventually and if you don't, someone else will. That's one good thing about having ADHD. I'm like hyper aware of the road and what's going on around me at all times and the ability of my vehicle. Actually, my abilities, that's probably just something I'm born with. Maybe it's just Maybelline. Yeah, my butt's sore. We're at the 40 minute mark on this ride and my butt hurts officially. Does that mean I want to stop riding? Heck no. 
I want to ride this thing all day long. This thing is just effortlessly in the car, in the road with the car. It's a 40. Totally effortless. Like maybe one quarter throttle. It's that last 15 miles an hour, between 40 and 55 miles an hour that you're using most of the power. The power is nice to be able to get you up to 40, but you really don't need to use a lot of it to stay there. One thing I should mention I'm not really that big of a fan of is the turning radius, or lack thereof. That's your turning radius right there. Not the worst, but not very impressive either. So one measure of power I see in a lot of these hyper bikes is when people say, oh yeah, the front tire will come up by itself, so be careful. That's like the measure of if it's really powerful or not. And I can tell you, sitting upright, flooring it, the front tire does not lift up by itself. Still Rolling Electric has a YouTube channel and he owns an Onyx and I sat on that thing and gave it the, the beans and the front tire went right off the ground. So this thing has power, but not the most power. It does get more brutal than this. With 72 volts, you're gonna get a lot more of the uh, torque. That being said though, 3,200 bucks. So much instant power, I love it. Thing. I put 125 miles on this bike, for the record, and I still love it. My only one real complaint is obviously the seat, because I like riding this thing for long periods of time. The battery will allow you to do that, especially during the summer, long, beautiful days. It's hard to only ride the bike around for 40 minutes. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed my video on the Telaria XXX. That's gonna be all for this video. If you're looking for an insanely fast e-bike that offers really good value for any adult, Definitely give this e-bike a look if you can find one in stock that is. 